Curtis. I'd like to welcome you to our Embedded Web Development uh, webinar. Um, I'm a support and applications engineer for Rabbit Semiconductor. And today I'm going to be introducing you to uh, embedded web development with our Rabbit family of microcontrollers. Uh, the presentation today is going to be an introductory guide uh, towards developing your own interactive web-based interfaces. A lot of engineers ask us uh, about integrating an LCD display with a Rabbit. And while you can do that, none of these is going to be as simple or as effective as using uh, a simple web browser because you can hook that up to any network and, and use it with any PC. Uh, I'm going to try and keep this simple. I haven't met an engineer yet who couldn't take something simple and make it more complicated. I haven't always seen the contrary. So we're going to work with some simple ideas and then we're going to look at some stuff it's a little more complicated as we get towards the end. What we're going to do here is try and bring everybody along for the ride. Uh, by keeping things simple, I want to make sure that you can use these tools on your own. Think of it like this. Uh, we could all go to an aquarium, and I could show you all the uh, fancy and amazing fish. And you could look at them, uh, but you can't touch them or eat them. If I teach you how to catch a fish, in the long run, you'll be better off. So this is our agenda. We're going to take a look at the basics of setting up TCP IP with the Rabbit. It's very, very simple. We're also going to look at some important web server concepts, uh, adding cascading style sheets to your web page, and a few, a few key Rabbit web ideas. Let's go ahead and move forward. This is uh, our projects options window inside Dynamic C. Uh, you can get here by going into the main menu. Under options, project options, you'll see the defines tab. The first five lines can be used for any Ethernet device, like the RCM 5700 mini core. The next nine lines are specifically for a wireless device, a Wi-Fi device. It's important that uh, when you set up your TCP IP settings, you pick settings that are appropriate for your network. I work with your network administrator to do this. There's, there's nothing that's going to increase your visibility in the workplace more than setting up your Rabbit test device to conflict with your mail server. Here's a very easy TCP IP program you can use for testing. You can see that this is very, very short. It just uses our API. The two things that are most important, lock in it or exit, uh, which initializes our TCP IP device and brings it up onto the network. Uh, when this line of code executes, it's also going to print out the IP address of your server when it starts up. If it doesn't come up, it will try to exit. So this is a, a good piece of API code for debugging, but not necessarily good for a final application. The next line of code that's uh, important is our TCP tick. This drives the TCP IP stack, and the faster your device calls the tick, the more responsive your server is going to be. I want to also talk about some key concepts with web servers. Uh, web servers uh, and HTML are not dynamic in nature, so it's important to understand how this works. Uh, the client requests a page from the server. The server delivers the page. The connection is finished, uh, and the page doesn't update until it sends a new request. Uh, one way to think about this is uh, uh, this is the way a normal web page would work. Let's say that uh, you want directions to the pizza parlor, and you give me a call. I'm going to tell you where to go, and then we hang up. Uh, when you get there, you can't find the parking lot, so you want to call me back. Uh, you I tell you where to park and we hang up again. This is how a web server typically works. Uh, an easy way to demonstrate this is if you load a web page and you unplug your Ethernet cable, uh, the page isn't going to notice that it doesn't have a connection to the web server anymore. However, if the HTML code in the web page instructs the browser to refresh itself automatically, uh, you can cause the page to reload uh, at, a, at a set interval. And that's important. 